Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, we're going over the best NES emulators on Android. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, there are a ton of NES emulators on the Google Play Store. A simple search for NES emulators will get you over a page of results. The first emulator I recommend is RetroArch. Now, if you have emulation experience and if you kind of know what you're doing, then RetroArch should be right up your alley. RetroArch is a little bit intimidating to get started with. I do have a tutorial video and I'll leave it in the description below. If you're not comfortable using RetroArch, that's absolutely fine. There is a standalone app that I do recommend. The standalone app I recommend is Nostalgia.NES. This comes in both a free and a paid version. The free version has ads and the paid version does not. The paid version also has a few extra features, but most people should be absolutely fine with the free version. If you do want the paid version, it's $5.99 Canadian or $4.99 US. This app is about 3.5 megabytes, so it's not very big. Most phones should be able to fit this emulator on them. On top of that, it uses FCEUX as its base, and what that means is it's not the most accurate emulator out there, but it should be pretty darn good for performance. When you first open Nostalgia.NES, you should be greeted with a screen that kind of looks something like this. Nostalgia automatically searches your phone for ROMs, which is pretty awesome, but it can also be kind of frustrating if your ROMs are zipped. This emulator will not read zipped ROMs, so you will have to unzip them. If you don't know how to do that, I will leave a link in the description below on how to unzip your ROMs, whether you're on Android or even on PC. The easiest way to do this is to unzip your ROMs on the computer and then just manually transfer them over. But if you don't have access to the PC, you can unzip them on your phone and it's not an issue. On the free version of this app, you will notice an ad on the bottom of the screen. To get rid of that ad, you can put your phone into airplane mode but there still will be a yellow box at the bottom. Now, once your ROMs have been located, you're ready to start playing your game. The very first thing I recommend doing is clicking on the hamburger menu on the top right-hand corner of this app, and this will bring up your menu. If you have a Bluetooth controller paired to your phone, which I would highly recommend, you can configure it in the remote controller section. The NES though, it doesn't necessarily require Require a Bluetooth controller. I mean, there are just a couple of buttons, so you should be okay with touchscreen controls, but just using a Bluetooth controller can make gameplay a lot easier. Now, what I recommend doing from here is just clicking on preferences. In this menu, you have access to different settings. Now, there are some settings that are grayed out because these are only available with the Pro version. You can see them here, quick save and load and system font. Also, sound volume. You don't necessarily need these, so it's not really a big deal. You should be absolutely fine with what the free version has to offer. The first setting I recommend changing is your emulation quality. From here, you can bump things up a little bit. By default, this is set to medium, but if you have a powerful phone or at least a recently made phone, you should be able to get away with high. If you are running into emulation issues, just go on ahead and switch it to medium or even low. Now, if you have a powerful device, go on ahead and click allow rewinding. This will allow rewinding of your game in real time, and it's a pretty cool feature. It will increase the strain on your phone, so if you have a lower power device, maybe keep this off. If you're using touchscreen controls, I do recommend checking out controller layout. By default, the touchscreen controls on this are set up a little bit weird. By default here, the start and select buttons are above the screen, which is a weird position, so I do recommend dragging those down if you want, just to make them a little bit more accessible. And the fast forward button is on the top right hand corner, which is not a good place for it either, so you can drag that down as well. From here, you're pretty much good to go. You can start playing your game and have some fun. If you do try to change another option and you're greeted with a message that looks like this, this means the option will work, but as soon as you close your game, it'll reset back to default. To avoid this, you have to pick up the pro version. So I booted up DuckTales and you can see everything is working absolutely fine. It's not a bad little emulator. Like most emulators out there, you can turn your phone sideways and use this in landscape mode as well. To use the rewind feature in game, all you have to do is hit the hamburger menu in the top right hand corner. And from here you can select rewind. If you enabled it in your settings, it should be listed right here. 
The rewind feature lets you drag back time a few seconds to hopefully before you screwed up. I like the implementation of this feature and it works pretty well. Now moving over to RetroArch. If you do want to use RetroArch, I recommend using the Mezzin Core if you're looking for accuracy. It's pretty darn accurate and one of the best cores out there for it. If your phone is having trouble running Mezzin or maybe Mezzin isn't running the game you're looking for, you can try out Nestopia UE. This is also a pretty darn good core. Here's a really quick side by side side by side. You have Mezzin with default settings, Nestopia UE with default settings, and Nostalgia.NES with high graphics settings. But anyways, that is all I've got for today. Most devices nowadays should be absolutely fine with NES emulation. Most people should be absolutely fine with the free version of Nostalgia.NES. If you play NES games a ton on your device, you might want to spring for the paid version, you get some additional options, and you get no ads. But again, it's not necessarily mandatory. Let me know your thoughts on NES emulation on Android in the comments below. If there's another emulator app you want me to take a look at on Android, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.